Welcome to Pet Pals. I'm Dee Dee and this is Randy and we are here at Frederick County Animal Control with some animals that are available for adoption that we would like to introduce you to. Our first guest is Athena and we had Athena on the show two weeks ago. She is a medium haired gray tabby female and she raised kittens in our foster program and the reason I'm featuring her again is that I'm a little surprised she's still here after two weeks because she's so pretty. But I also wanted to give her a little boost because her kittens that she raised in our foster care program, of course, are all adopted, which we want. It's a great thing. <clears throat> but it means that she is still here in the shelter um, after a couple weeks on the adoption floor. And with her beautiful green eyes, I'm kind of surprised that she didn't catch someone's attention. So if you think that Athena would make a nice match for you, things you need to know about her, um, she is uh, an adult female cat. She came to us as a stray with her babies and, uh, and she was a really good mom. So if you are interested in helping her out, please come by the shelter on Rosemont Avenue and meet her and see what you think. Our next guest today is Peach and Peach is a seal point Himalayan cat and these kitties offer the best of both worlds between Siamese and Persian. At Frederick County Animal Control we don't get very many Persian cats but we do get a number of Himalayans every year because they're very popular. As you can see they're quite beautiful. They usually have um, the Persian attitude and um, the Persian cats attitude is, uh, it can be considered aloof by people who don't know them, um, but for people who do know them, they're pretty low-key, they're not um, overactive, uh, they're not as vocal as a Siamese cat, although they do use their voice. And I don't know how well you can see on camera, but her whiskers are amazing. Each one of them is probably like five inches long. And uh, part of the Persian attitude is uh, she eats the cat food she likes. So it's been a little difficult for us to find exactly which flavor of food she wants each morning. She makes it very clear, walks over, inspects, and says, nope, not that one. And so um, for people who like Persian cats, um, they do appreciate the discriminating nature. Um, she does let us brush her. She came to us because her owner uh, said she had too many animals to care for. So the good news for you is that Peach is used to other cats, she's used to dogs, and she's been around kids and likes them just fine. So she has a lot to offer. And as you can see, one of the um, characteristics of Persians is that they, they can be real lap cats. She would uh, pretty much like to do this all day. And here, while she's in the shelter, she doesn't have that option because um, she's confined, but we have a lot of volunteers that uh, come in every single day, give her as much of this as she can possibly have. And is she purring? I think so. So um, she uh, can get the affection that she wants uh, a little bit while she's here. It's but shaking or purring. Oh, so she, she's either purring or trembling, and uh, given her personality here, which has been very affectionate, but uh, careful about her, what food she eats and um, in her cage. She doesn't jump down and rush to the door to meet everyone. Um, but as you can see, she's uh, very calm and affectionate and sweet and, uh, and beautiful. So if you are interested in a cat like Peach, we have uh, one of her siblings is here and you'll be meeting him in a moment. Uh, he's a little bigger, so our relatives, he's one of her relatives. So uh, if you think that um, Peach is a good match for you or someone that you know, if you know someone who's been waiting for a Himalayan cat, then you can go to PetFinder.com and uh, pass her picture around or put it on Facebook for us. We are back with Bear. Bear is six months old and a relative of Peach's. And um, although genetically 
far less than 10%, and I actually think it's far less than 5% of the genes that you inherit from your parents have anything to do with what you look like. But with um, cats and dogs, it can be interesting to talk about genetics because there are so many families of dogs and families of cats that look so similar to each other. So purebred cats like Bear, uh, a Himalayan, have the same color patterns as other species of cat. The genes are there for the color patterns. So he would have the same genetic background as an orange tabby. Um, and that may, you know, doesn't really matter to his personality. He's sweet no matter what color he is. But it's very interesting to me that the Siamese gene that makes his body beige and his color only show up on his ears and face um, cover up the orange tabby and he is called Flame Point if that matters to you. It's all fancy and nice to know about, but what's really important is um, that these cats were raised with dogs, cats, kids, um, and they have a lot of experience to offer. Uh, they let you brush them, and as you can see, very much a lap cat. Uh, Bear's only six months old, so you have seen kittens on this show before that were six months old that did not nearly have this uh, low-key, uh, calm demeanor and that's what people like about Himalayans. One of the reasons they happen to have that kind of personality is because uh, they were bred on purpose, created to appear this way. They have to be brushed and that means that they have to tolerate that. So uh, they don't mind lounging on your lap for hours at a time. Uh, they don't require hours of brushing a day but they certainly wouldn't mind it. So uh, if you are interested in a beautiful lion looking cat like Bear, then uh, come by and meet him and uh, we will see if it makes a good match. And if you just know that you want a Himalayan cat, then we have the wish list service and you can stay on the list until we get any more Himalayans and we'll let you know and you can come in and meet them as they arrive until you find the perfect one for you. We are back with CJ. And CJ is an orange tabby, domestic medium hair, and he has the same genetic color as the Himalayan that you just met, Bear. This orange tabby gene makes uh, the orange color with the tiger pattern. The same gene makes the orange points on a Himalayan cat. So uh, CJ is much larger than Bear. He's a little older. He's two to three years old. He's a neutered male whose owner left him with family members for over a year. So the family members decided that his owner is not coming back and um, they need him to have a permanent home and not just, you know, be a boarder where they're waiting for something to happen. CJ's very outgoing. He's been around kids. He's been around men, women, other cats. He came in with another cat. So if you are interested in adopting two together, then CJ already has a potential roommate, if you like. He is, um, as you can see, outgoing, confident, mellow, everything that people like about cats, and quite beautiful. He lets us brush him and handle him, so he's really going to make someone a really great pet. Being so young, uh, he has plenty of time left to give, too. I don't know if we talk about it much on the show, but uh, cats can live 18 to 20 years now. Um, it's not common. It's more common that they live uh, 12 to 15 years. But uh, as advances in feline nutrition and preventative medicine and keeping cats indoors become more common, then uh, we're seeing their lifespan increase. So it really is a commitment to take on a cat as far as the time that you have to give them but uh, what they give back and how much they really need of your resources is um, pretty much worth it. They um, are easier to care for than dogs because you do not have to take them on a walk three, four times a day. Uh, you can teach him to sit and give his paw if you want to. You can teach cats to roll over and whatnot, but you don't need to because they don't need to be entertaining and they don't need to go out and about and learn not to jump on people. Uh, so a lot of people who formerly would have gotten dogs are deciding that they want to have a cat. Let's say you're at work and everybody says, hey, let's go out for happy hour. If you have a cat, you don't have to call home, get permission. You don't have to get the neighbor to go walk your cat. So uh, they really do fit into the lives of uh, busy people. 
Certainly they want some attention, but they're fine with sitting home on the weekend watching a movie, whereas your dog's going to be there with the tennis ball saying movie. I don't think so. So um, if you have been a dog person most of your life and are thinking that uh, not not having a dog is going to fit in with your lifestyle, maybe you should come and talk to us about what cats have to offer, especially cats like CJ. Our last feline guest for this episode is Autumn. And Autumn is a one to two year old female brown tabby. And I don't know if you can tell relative to CJ, but she is tiny and this is all the bigger she'll ever be. In Frederick, we do have a large number of cats that come to us as strays that are really petite. And some vets say it's possible that uh, these tiny cats could have just had uh, limited nutrition when they were growing. But it's also possible that it's a range of cat sizes that's determined genetically because there are so many of them, male and female alike, that are very, very small, even as adults. She um, probably weighs about six pounds, and that's all she's ever going to weigh. And uh, she is, uh, when we took her out of the cage, she's trembling, so she's a little bit shy. But she's really affectionate, a nice cat to handle in the shelter. She likes approaching people in her cage. One of the things people often say to us is that they feel like it's sad for cats to be in a cage for a couple of months while they wait for a new home. And what I would like for everybody to know is, is what cats want is a safe place to stay that they own, that they can control. So many cats feel so comfortable in their cage here. Their food is brought to them, their um, volunteers come and brush them and trim their nails and take care of them every day. So they actually feel quite safe in their cage and it's when we bring them out that they're nervous. So we recommend when you get a cat and take them to, your, to a new house, to a place where they've never been before, that you put them in the bathroom for a couple of days so that they can have a time to transition from a small place to a medium-sized place. And then, believe me, they will enjoy the whole expanse of your home and take over. But they need to do that gradually because cats do get eaten by larger animals. So they want to have a small, safe place where they can uh, scope everything out before they venture into the wild beyond. So if you think one of our rabbits is hopping around. So if you think that Autumn would make a nice match for you or someone that you know, uh, then give us a call, come by and meet her, share her picture around. And I don't know if you can see on camera, but she's making biscuits on uh, Randy's lap. And that is something that cats do when they are uh, feeling affectionate and comfortable. So um, she, though she came to astray, obviously, she's been someone pet, someone's pet, she knows people, and she would love to have uh, some people of her own. We'll be back after a short break with more adoptable pets from Frederick County Animal Control. Hope you join us. Need an idea for your child's birthday party? Look no further. At the Middletown Rec Center, we have all your birthday party needs. We have a full-size gymnasium, our large rec room, sports equipment, and many birthday party theme ideas. Each party includes crafts, games, and a story. Please call 301-600-1646 for more information. We are back with our canine guests dogs that are in need of adoption from Frederick County Animal Control. And people ask us all the time about um, managing the population of animals that we do here. We are very fortunate in Frederick County. We serve about 230,000 citizens. We take in about 6,000 animals a year. And um, we uh, are able to save uh, all of the healthy, friendly dogs. We are also able to save a lot of the dogs that have minor issues, and Alvin would be one of those. Alvin has a condition of his eyes called cherry eye. It does not affect his vision. It does not require medication. Um, cosmetically, a veterinarian can do surgery if you don't want to see the little pink bags under his eyes, but you don't have to do that. And um, certainly, 
if you have questions about adopting Alvin, you could call any vet that you normally see and ask about Cherry Eye and what you would need to do. Um, Alvin was recently groomed. He came to us as a stray with a companion Shih Tzu, and uh, they had really long hair. One thing you should definitely know if you're going to adopt a Shih Tzu is that this hair coat that he is showing you right now is not his natural form. Shih Tzus have very long, silky hair, much like a Yorkie, and that either has to be um, brushed or kept up in little ponytails, or of course you can take the easy way out that we do here and uh, have him groomed. One of our kennel techs does some professional grooming, so uh, Charlotte gave him a little makeover so he would be able to stay uh, clean and not require too much grooming while he's here with us. It will all grow back. So if you've been wanting a Shih Tzu, they make pretty outgoing, friendly little dogs. Because these guys came to us as, a stray, as strays, we don't know if they um, are used to kids. Obviously, he's used to other dogs because he came with one. We don't know how they feel about cats. But these are all things that are easy to find out. And since he's only four years old, um, then it's pretty likely that he has come across all of those things, especially if he was allowed to be out and unattended. So whenever I talk about strays, I always like to bring up um, the value of a microchip or ID tag on your pet. If a neighbor were to have found these dogs and they had name tags on them with phone numbers, they would have never had to come here. But when people find dogs outside and they put up a couple signs, they ask around, if they cannot tell whose dog it is, the best thing for them to do if they hope for that dog to be reunited with his family is to bring him here. We are the only shelter. If someone is looking for their dog, they will be directed here within short order of asking around if they don't know about us. And that is the best way that we can get dogs back to their families. Unfortunately, um, many of the dogs that we get in the shelter never are reclaimed despite being house trained and friendly and um, many of the dogs that come to us stray sit on command, give paw, get along with other dogs, even roll over. And um, there's just no answering in this business why people who lose their dogs do not look at the shelter. So Alvin is in need of a new home. And uh, if you are interested in a little dog like him, let us know. We are back with Lucky. And Lucky is a spayed female Pomeranian she is two years old. She's lived with other dogs and she's used to children. And she is a little nervous about being in our studio. So um, she had her picture taken for a pet finder with Randy so she knows him. But a lot of times dogs are nervous when they see, you know, a large, big, round camera looking at them. And also, um, anytime we bring a dog into a new place, in the shelter, they often think they're at the veterinarians and many dogs with veterinary experience are a little worried. Am I gonna get a shot? Am I gonna get left here for a vacation by my family? So she is a little nervous, <clears throat> which means that you would probably see the same behavior in your new house for the first day or two because she's gonna wonder what that's all about. We do some behavior assessment here at the shelter and what that means is our medical staff, um, primarily Lauren, uh, takes in a new dog and uh, gives them food, takes the food away, hands a toy, takes the toy away, does some manipulation of their feet, their ears, to let us know what the dog's temperament is when they're under a little bit of pressure. And um, you can see that on her if you come in, see how she scored on all of the tests. But primarily what I'm letting you know is that she bounces back right away, so we feel that she will make someone a great pet. She's just a little more sensitive than some of our more outgoing, robust dogs. And sometimes people want that. They don't want a dog that's going to run up to strangers, jump on everyone, uh, bark at everything, and uh, be a handful. Some people do want that because they want to have a Frisbee dog or a dog park dog or a camping dog. Um, she, uh, Lucky, is not going to uh, be a Frisbee or camping dog. She is going to want somebody to take strolls around the familiar neighborhood with, sit in the lap of, share some chicken with. So um, if you are interested in a little dog like Lucky, then come by and meet her. Also, if you are interested in Pomeranians in general, 
then you can get on our wish list because we get uh, quite a few every year. And we also get some Palm Pug mixes and some other types of dogs related that might be right for you. So um, because she is nervous, I'm gonna let her go back to her familiar area. Um, but certainly if you come in to meet her, we can take her out in the yard and you can see she's much more comfortable when she um, doesn't have to be on camera. It's okay, all done. We are back with Maxie. And uh, Maxie is a petite little beagle that was given to us by her family. They tragically uh, lost their home and they're gonna have to uh, stay else for, for a while where they can't have her. The reason this story is so tragic to me <clears throat> is that Maxie is 12 years old. So she has spent her life with a family that she loves, that she wants to be with, and now she's here. In her experience, uh, this is like being at the vet or the kennel. So um, on the one hand, I am trying to pull on your heartstrings and say that she misses her family and definitely needs a second start. But on the other hand, I'm trying to let you know that um, a lot of times people think that the shelter is a, a doggy jail, which we don't like it being called that because um, we have heated floors, they have blankets, toys, so it's more like a hotel. It may not be your home, it may not be your own bed, but we have room service and a doctor on staff and activities, so there's plenty for her to do. It doesn't have to be um, time spent uh, just wanting to get out of here, but our goal for her is that she have another family and that she get a, a second start. So. A 12-year-old dog is like a 70-year-old person. So what's going to be hard on her is sometimes people say, I don't really want to take a dog that's only going to have like five more years to give. But what we like to tell people is if you're being logical and not emotional, uh, what are your plans in five years? What do you think you'll be doing? You may get a new job. You may move. Your kids may go off to college and you want to tour Europe. So how great would it be to have a dog for the next five to seven years, a dog that is already trained, already used to people, already fits in, and um, you get to enjoy all of the benefits of a dog without having to puppy train and go through the chewing stage and have to deal with all of the things that people have to do when they get a puppy. When you get a puppy, it takes two years to make the puppy into a good dog. Maxie's already a good dog. so. One of the things that uh, we hope uh, is that somebody will understand how great that is and want to um, come and snap her up and uh, give her a second start and um, let her live out the rest of the time that she has with people that she loves. We are back with a six month old puppy. Um, this is a puppy that is considered a designer dog because he was a mixture of two purebred dogs on purpose for sale as a puppy. He's a Pekachan, and that means half Pekingese, half Bichon. He has um, a really cute black and white coat, and he doesn't look much different than a cockapoo, and cockapoos have been around, you know, 60, 80 years. Um, but it is very common for people to believe that mixed breeds are healthier than purebreds, Research says that that's not the case, that um, an equal amount of dogs get hip dysplasia, whether they're mixed breeds or pure breeds, and that uh, an equal number of dogs have skin allergies, whether they're mixed breeds or pure breeds. So um, it is just something that the public wants, a dog that's half this and half that, or a mixed breed for the belief of hybrid vigor. Um, and he is an example of that. One of the things that people also think when they buy one of these, this Pikachon, is that, you know, breeders can sell them for $500, even $1,000. Pet stores sell them for even $1,200. They're not essentially or inherently more valuable than any other dog. It's just that they're in limited supply, so, um, and they're available right there at the pet store, so they can charge a premium. But he is going to need the same house training, the same grooming, the same um, lessons in life that any puppy of any breed needs. So what we're going to do is accept four applications for him, and then we are going to pick the best match. And what we are looking for is either somebody with lots of experience or somebody uh, that is dedicated to the cause, uh, wanted this type of dog, and, and has the resources to stick it out because he could live 16 to 18 years. So 
a lot of times people come here for their first pet and we love that because we can help you. We'll tell you how to crate train, house train, target train, and we will get you all set to have a wonderful life with your dog. But if you are 20 right now and you are looking at this dog, you could still have him when you are 38 by which time you might be married, you might have changed jobs, you might have two or three children. So uh, getting a dog is a big commitment because a lot changes in someone's life in 15 years. So um, we are looking for that kind of commitment for this guy because he's only six months old. So he has all of those things to go through. We are back with our last guest this episode of Pet Pals and this is Echo. Echo is a one to two year old female pit bull um, she is spayed now. Uh, she is called uh, Fawn or Blue Brindle. And she, I don't, you can't really see the side view of her, but you will be able to throughout the, um, throughout the filming. She is a beautiful, like a little statue, um, a beautiful dog. And uh, she is a pit bull mix. Her ears are crazy cute. And uh, she has been with us for uh, two months now. So we know a lot about her. Even though she came to us as a stray, she's been out and about to events. She has her rabies shot. She's had surgery here. Um, she spends a lot of time in her cage, lying on her bed comfortably. I think as far as Echo is concerned, she lives here. Uh, we have heated floors. She has her own toys. She has walks every day. Um, she knows Randy very well and some of our other volunteers, as well as all the staff members. And she is such a good girl. She plays Frisbee with some of our volunteers in the yard outside. So um, we've really gotten attached to her. She's gotten attached to us. But the nice thing for us is that when we have a stray dog that comes in, it helps people be interested in adopting if they can hear some of the likes and dislikes of the dogs and uh, their skills, what they've done here in the shelter or in their former life. Since we don't know anything about her former life, I would love to say she hasn't been here for two months, but that gives us a chance to get to know her. Yes, and Randy wants to show she's very gentle. She takes food from your hand. She's very sweet. She sits when you ask her to. She's good on the leash. And she will be um, at uh, this weekend. We're going to go to, what's the name of the feed store in Jefferson? J.C. Summer. J.C. Summer. She's going to be at J.C. Summer this weekend. Um, and uh, so we'll have even more information about her. She's been to several events with us and she does a great job, great manners, great personality. And I guess we try to oversell that because um, she is pit bull mix and that means some landlords won't allow her and some neighbors will be afraid of her based solely on her appearance, which is completely unfair because as we said at the beginning of the show when we were talking about cat colors, um, what you look like on the outside is determined by far less than 10% of your genetic material. So what you look like on the outside is unfortunately for us in evaluating dogs, not able to tell you what a dog's behavior will be. So as you can see, she um, has won us over and we want the best for her. And uh, we are committed to finding that if you think that Echo would make a nice match for you or somebody that you know, then come and meet her because once you do, you'll definitely see um, she has everything that a dog needs to make somebody a really great pet. Thank you for joining us this week on Pet Pals and uh, Echo hopes you will come by and see her. And if you have not found the perfect match for yourself today, then uh, check out petfinder.com. Come by the shelter in person. Check out our Sunday page in the Frederick News Post. Um, or put in your wish list request and we will let you know when your perfect match is here. There is a link at the bottom of your screen right now that will let you see the other episodes of Pet Pals from weeks gone by. And uh, hopefully when you think of getting a pet, you will think of the shelter first.